Okay, so I don't normally do a tackle part of my video, and everybody's always asking me questions about offshore trips, what I use for snapper and the tackle I use for sheep's head and whatnot. Now, if it's going to be an inshore trip within state waters, I normally just stick to a Jim's jig, one eighth to a quarter ounce jig head. Pretty much use this for all the snapper, sheep's head, redfish, nook, trap. I pretty much only use this for just about everything. You can hook a shrimp under the head, let them swim. You can hook it to the tail so it stays on the hook better. And you can toss this up to the rocks. You can jig it on the bottom. It has a slow drop when you drop it for a snapper. They like to eat it on the drop. It's bright. I love to use this for pretty much everything. And you just simply tie it to a 20 pound fluorocarbon leader, about two and a half feet. I use the Berkeley 20 pound test fluorocarbon. I buy this one because it's 10 bucks for 200 yards at Walmart. As you can see, it lasts a while. You see, I've had this one for a long time. You can barely read it. Lasts a lot longer than normal liters. It's only 10 bucks. Now that's for inshore. You know, just simple. Use this for everything. Now when you go offshore, it gets a little trickier because you're not allowed to use J hooks with bait on it in federal waters. So that's when you have to go to a small circle hook for snapper. Now, this is where it gets tricky. When you get to the spots I like to snapper fish, we chum heavy, so that brings the snapper up off the bottom and you get the bigger snapper that way. Fishing directly on the bottom like I used to with a hook you know, this far off the bottom or higher, sometimes you have it a good couple feet off the bottom like this, that gets the snapper over the grunts because the grunts are always right here and the snapper and the snapper are sometimes up higher off the bottom so this high sometimes avoids the grunt but you still get the smaller snapper that way so I've noticed to get the keeper snapper we will chum and it'll bring the snapper up off the bottom and the bigger ones are more curious and will come all the way up to the boat. So that's when you want to start free lining. You know, just simply just the hook and no weight. And put a shrimp on that covers the hook completely so they see pretty much no tackle but the fluorocarbon which is pretty much invisible. But when you first pull up to a spot before you start chumming the fish don't come to the surface immediately every time. So I'll start off with a small weight and especially if the current's strong I'll keep the weight on. If the current's not strong I'll take the weight off and go back to free line. But for the first half an hour to an hour I always start off with a light knocker rig. Usually just a 1 16th ounce. Very light just so it barely gets the shrimp moving downward but it's not on the bottom. Usually they eat it before it makes it to the bottom. If the current's strong, I'll use a 3 4 ounce. I mean 3 8 ounce weight. Uh, I'm going to start the video like this. Very simple. Slide a weight on. Put your hook on the end. I tie a very simple knot where I just wrap it around my fingers. Stick the hook through the loop. And pull the loop tight. I'm not sure what that's called, but that's pretty much what I always use. Very easy way to tie it on and it never slips. And that's how I'll start the video tomorrow. Just like that. Very lightweight. As the shrimp swims, the sinker will leave it and the shrimp will swim freely like it's free lined they won't see this weight that's on there keeping it down there. Mm -hmm. 
And of course, if the current's strong, I'll just add more weight. So, you'll see that's what I'm going to use tomorrow. Very simple, very easy to tie on. That's perfect for snapper. And if it reaches the bottom, then a sheep's head will grab it. But that's my offshore snapper technique for the bigger ones. And then inshore, I just use just a jig head. So those are my two favorite ways for snapper. Pretty simple. It's pretty much the same thing with grouper. You just want a bigger hook. You know, beef up your tackle to 50, 60 pound liter. I don't know if you can see it very well. But I use a nine knot circle hook. At this spot, the structure is so high that you want your bait coming down. That way when the fish grabs it, it'll eat it before it hits the bottom and you can pull them away from the structure. Because if the structure is up here and your bait's down here, the fish can just swim underneath it and break you off before you have a chance. So at least this way with no weight, it'll slowly be drifting down with the chum. And that way hopefully the fish grabs it before he can make it to the structure and you can pull him away. That way you improve your chances of actually landing a grouper. That's fishing on spots with structure that's 15 feet high. You don't really have much of a chance if you're dropping it straight to the bottom. So that's why I don't normally grouper fish at this spot. Normally just snapper fish. That way it's easier to pull them out. But I think for grouper your best bet is finding spots with smaller structure. You know, five, six foot max. If you enjoyed the video, like the video, subscribe to the channel and watch the rest of my videos. There's a bunch of other snapper and grouper videos on redfish. Um, but if you subscribe to my channel, you can stay tuned and see the rest of my videos. Thanks for watching.